So what we're going to do here is let me make sure that I'm on the right slot. Ah, there we go. My favorite ten, C++ 10 liner. You may know from earlier that I have a new favorite 13 line of code, but it's not 10, so I can't use it, unfortunately. But I'll use it to demonstrate that I am not counting includes and usings. It doesn't have to be a whole program, but what's a, a nice little self-contained, understandable snippet of code in just 10 lines that is interesting, and so I wanted to share that. But so 13 isn't, isn't quite down to that. If you go to isocpp.org and you look at various of us have our profiles there, one of the things you'll find in a lot of them, including mine, is our favorite short 10-line piece of code. And this is mine, that you, pretty much as you will find it on isocpp.org on the wiki uh, page about me. Tell me what this line of what this 10-liner does. Returns a widget. Yes. What else? How? What are the semantics? How long does the widget live? Say again? It's an implementation of a cache. Is it thread safe? Yes. Looks like it, so ship it, right? So <laughs> what are the lifetime semantics of every widget in the cache? Yelled out again, louder. As long as somebody else is holding a pointer to it. What about the cache itself? Does the cache keep objects alive? No. no. What does it do if you ask for an object that's not in the cache? Loads it. And it doesn't do the speculative load where you get two loads at the same time and you might throw one away. So it does, you could do it that way and hold the mutex less long. But it does the load under a mutex so you don't do redundant loads in case that's not right. This is a really cool, complete reference counted object cache that is thread safe. And you can, like I just said, make that critical section even shorter if you're willing to add a few lines and do an atomic compare and swap and that kind of thing. To, and possibly do redundant loads if there's two requests for an object not in the cache that come in right at the same time. But just look at what's going on here. What features are we using from C++? Well, first we're using in the bolded line, the third to last line, yes, there's an auto, map subscript operator auto insertion. So if you go cache sub ID, what does that do? Creates what if it's not there? It is guaranteed to return you back the second object, the associated value, with that ID. If there isn't one, it will happily make one for you. So that's the semantics we want. So we can just blindly say cache ID. Now what is cache sub ID? Its type that it returns is a weak pointer. How many of you are familiar with weak pointer? Maybe you've used it. Oh, lots. So it holds a weak reference to something that's owned by a shared pointer. And as long as there are shared pointers around, if someone else has an honest to goodness shared pointer and you call dot lock, that's thread safe. And it will atomically give you back a shared pointer now that you're participating. So as soon as lock, if it succeeds, so auto SP, if SP is true, then now I am holding on to it. And even if the other guy goes away, it's okay because I can use it and hand it back again. So that's the one C++ 98 feature we're using. Of course, from C++ 11, we have to use auto. So there it is. Notice we do not use auto for the lock guard only because it's one of the very few exceptions to, uh, to almost always auto, which is a non-movable type. We also use std mutex and lock guard. See, I could have actually broken those out and made them two more features, but they kind of go together. So we use mutex, we use lock guard from the standard. This is portable code. Did you notice that we also initialize the map thread safely? Because the first guy who calls this is going to have to create the cache. It's a static variable. C++ now guarantees that that is thread safe. And as of our CTP, that will actually be true. And <laughs> Later this quarter, not in VS 2013, but later this quarter, that will actually be true. It uses shared putter as advertised. It uses weak putter, which is just so nice that, and even though it goes with shared putter, I break it out as a separate feature of C11 because of the ways you could use it. And, you know, mutex lock guard, they just seem closer than shared putter. Yeah, you can break these apart, but it uses them all. And thread safe dot lock. 
This is my personal current favorite 10 liner until I can get the previous slide down three more lines with the comma operator. I am not going to take a question from STL because I am too afraid. It's another chance to use auto. No, not even for another chance to use auto. However, there is a problem with this code. What is the problem with this code? It's not a technical problem with the code. So I don't want to hear a technical problem with the code. If the widget is allocated with make share, then the lifetime of the memory allocated is the lifetime of your process. We can talk about where make shared comes into this. But what's wrong with my count? It's not 10. It's not 10. I've been waiting for somebody to say that. This is only a seven line code example. Whatever will I do with my other three lines? OK, since I have three more lines, here's my, the, rest, the other half of my favorite 10 liner, which I actually, in 10 lines of code, get two cool pieces of code. What is this? Singleton. Singleton. Is it threads? Oh, who said it? Say it louder. Myers. Myers Singleton. Yes, Scott is famous for this version of the Singleton. When he first published it, it wasn't thread safe. Now it is. Why? Because we have thread safe function statics. And the nice thing about this version of singleton, OK, yes, we all know singleton's evil because it's just a global variable. Get over it. We use global variables. We use static functions. We should not overuse them. We should be very careful with them. But they're a tool. So sometimes you will want a singleton. I'll bet you you have only one keyboard attached to your computer. So sometimes you only have one of something. Let's leave that aside, because that's a discussion in itself. Best had over a round of beers. But what this does, it will create the widget on demand only if somebody ever asks for it and return a reference. And the nice thing compared to the gang of four singleton pattern, I don't remember whether the gang of four singleton pattern ever destroys it. it actually, has a destroy, it, 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 there was a whole several pages on destruction policies and the different ways you might destroy it. And Andre talks about that in his 1999 book as well. But this is pretty cool since I had three lines left over. So those are my 10 favorite lines of code. That did not take 20 minutes, so I want to use the rest of this slot to tell you about some more pieces of code that you have written. So for those of you who have not yet watched the first talk from Tuesday, the talk that was entitled 1C++, in the middle of the talk, I put out a challenge. So for those of you who are watching this in the, our future, who are not here and, or alive and watching it in our future, please go to that talk. It's about here, the link on your page. Just click it. We'll wait. No, really? OK, you're back. So you'll see the challenge was to use a modern graphics library, a C++ library like Cinder, which you're going to be excited about now that you've seen that. If, you, if you're cheating, really go do it. And we challenged people to see what could you, since yesterday, in about 24 hours, build. And we've already shared earlier today several things that you built. So let me show you a few more uh, things that you created. And we'll go. Nope, that wasn't it. Yes, here we go. The first thing I want to do is ask whether Brandon Full James is still in the room. Are you still here? Yes. Can you please come down one more time? Because you already told us about, about your app. But I, wanted, I forgot to ask you something that I really meant to ask you. OK? So Brandon, you remember Brandon? Yeah. Brandon. See, I I'm, I'm made a note to myself on this slide with a cryptic binary 2. Actually, it's decimal 10, because I, it reminded me to ask you something. So how old were you when you first started writing code? Uh, believe it or not, four. Four. What language? Basic. Definitely so, basic. Wait for it. When did you switch to C++? When I was 10. Say that again. Uh, when I was 10. And just for the record, when I went to the bookstore to pick up a C++ book, the guy behind the counter wouldn't sell it to us for about 10 minutes because he was trying to convince us that I should not have that book. <laughs> Who knew there were age requirements? You were already getting ready for being carded at 21. I mean, you started early. And the reason I wanted to point this out, and I will tell you the exact words that I said to you in person when you told me this the first time about a day ago, this is important because way too many people believe you do not exist. Thank you very much. But wait, there's more. 
Alan Knight, are you in the room? Come on down. You're way in the back corner, so you'll have to run. Give him a hand, please. Alan. Can you guess what Alan built? Obviously, Pac-Man inspired. The, the reason I saw it, he didn't even email it to me. I was just walking down at one of the earlier breaks this afternoon, and I saw him playing Missile Command, and I just had, I'd assumed it was, uh, jokingly, I said, did you write that? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so when did you write this? Uh, earlier today, just in about two and a half hours, I was watching the other talks. <laughs> And don't, I, I don't, don't tell because, us which ones. And I did this because my coworker actually wrote the original. Oh, very nice. And, and Tempest, Dave, Thu I think his uh, name is Dave Thurer. He works at, with me in Santa Barbara. Oh, very nice. Okay, so he's got an edge. But you wrote this in standard C++ plus Cinder. Yep. Nothing else. Yep. No, no extra libraries you already knew. Yep. And 185 lines of code you told me. Yes. Now, had you used Cinder before? You were nope. a Cinder expert from way back. No, nope, never used it before. Today. When did you first hear about it? Uh, when you talked about it. And you downloaded it mm -hmm. and built this. And by the way, it works. So we didn't get a video because it was so short. But thank you very much for uh -huh. that. And tell me, what was your experience with it? It was great. I mean, I was able to do, I mean, there's no scoring or anything like that. But I can actually blow the, I was having fun just blowing up the, the missiles and stuff like that. That was great. <laughs> thank I you. how fun that was, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Alan. Give him a hand. By the way, let's not lose sight of the fact C++ is hard. <laughs> Next, Andre. Now, we have yet a third Andre. This one spells his name with a Y. Andre, are you in the room? All right, come on down, and you'll have to tell me how to pronounce your last name. Is it Fetchoshov? Yep. Yes? Oh, good. Somebody else said yes on your behalf, I think. <laughs> so we'll trust them. Now, you built something called Tanks, and you used open frameworks, right? No, actually, it's Cinder. Oh, it's Cinder. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. So you use Cinder as well. And how did you find it? Had you used Cinder before? No, it's all uh, like your points. Okay. Did you, did you enjoy it? How long did it take you? Yeah, the good point about Cinder is that it's very thin, actually. So if you find something missing, you can go to GL directly. I, I was using GL. Uh, and, you know, write some missing part like texture rotation or something like this. Okay, yeah. hold that for a second, and let me see, because I think you actually had sent me, just so we can see this visually, you had sent me, ah, here it is, a YouTube video. And let's get this. Yeah, sorry for PR. <laughs> That's all right. It's great. And let's see if we get this running. Aha. So tell us what we're seeing. What are you doing? Actually, I'm playing. I'm, I'm playing. Yeah, I'm just using control and space, like... Oh, you just sped up. Arrows and space, yeah. There are some bugs I can go outside the map, actually. But, <laughs> but that's okay for a demo. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your game and share it with us. Yeah, and thank you is because this is how we drive in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Noah Wecker, can you come down, please? Where's Noah? Come on down. Let's give him a hand because he built what you see here. Now, Noah, this was built in Cinder. I think I got that one right. Because yes. I said Cinder or Open Frameworks. A lot of people went for Cinder. This is grass, like, but I don't understand what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. So I just uh, wrote an app that created a dynamic uh, like mask, bitmap mask, and then kind of with some programming art, I did kind of just overlaid it. So it kind of like grow grass on a dirt texture. So something simple. <laughs> cool. Now, had you used Cinder before? I, I have not. I've used Ogre, which is kind of trying to do a similar thing, but uh -huh. uh, Cinder worked really well. I'm actually my first time using Xcode as well, because I just brought my MacBook Air and it worked right away when I downloaded it. So yeah. Excellent. So overall, would you recommend this to say, uh, let's say that you had a, a younger sibling or somebody who was starting university or start, even in high school was learning programming 101, would you recommend their teachers use this kind of environment in C++ to teach them programming? Yeah, I, I do and I have. <laughs> ah, excellent. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like you have. I did not I know do. that. I do. I have a sibling and uh, I recommended Cinder. I said, hey, check it out. Oh, so, very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Let's give him a hand, too. So. This, by the way, emphasizes something about Lego versus clay. If you give people a library that's good for one particular thing, you can write, uh, use a, an engine that does great first-person action games, and it's great for that. And there is a place for that. It's a, it's a, a good thing. 
but we also need something that we can use creatively to use in unstructured ways like clay and like Play-Doh. And that's where all these ideas are coming from. Now, Gore Nishinov, you're over here somewhere. Gore, come on down, Gore. You knew this you were going to be next. Let's give Gore a hand. I think he's a little shy, so we'll encourage him or scare him. So this is part of the email that you had sent to me, and I believe we have a video on the next slide. So tell us what we're seeing here. Oh, uh, this is two programs battling each other. And uh, well, it's kind of like uh, Malevich, you know, the black square. So a red, a reds are bombs, is where you write data values into a program. And then the orange one, it's self-replicating uh, imp, which keeps moving forward. And the first one is dwarf, which is static. The white blinking thing is an instruction pointer, which keeps around. And the, I think the green one, or, or bluish, is the current instruction head when you switch between different threads. Uh, Would you call that creative? Not. <laughs> oh, and one plug about the Tinder. The amazing thing there is settings. Play with them. Because frequently people have constants and then recompile and see how it looks. And there, you just add settings and then it gives this rotating ball, for example. And can, you can rotate the scene or change any parameter that you want visually. Thank you very much, Gore. Now, did we like that? By the way, notice how many we've been getting. There are a couple more. Mark, please, where are you? Mark? Ah, good, you're still here. Tell us about CodeBlitz. This is also done in Cinder. About how many lines of code is this roughly, and how long did it take you? Yeah, I didn't count the number of lines. I thought 200 maybe, maybe 150. Um, about an hour and a half last night, about another hour and a half this morning. And uh, 9.30, I emailed it to you. And what does it do? So it's just a simple visualization of a graph-based search. So it randomizes, uh, randomly creates a little scene and then specifies a random start, a random end, visualizes the search frontier, and, uh, and then it shows the, the resulting path. And it just keeps on running forever. So it's, you know, it's not really interactive, but it's kind of pretty. And um, you know, it's fun to, fun to do. Excellent. Well, thank you very much yeah. for that, Mark. And oh, had you used Cinder before? No. I'm just curious. Thank you very much. And I think. <laughs> William Van Ark, do we have William here? I'm very curious about this because I had not heard about Fire and Ice. And I'm going to get you to describe it to us while I switch to a video that you had given sure. me. This is actually a, from a, a board game. It's kind of like tic-tac-toe on steroids. The object is to control three islands in a row. Uh, but each, uh, there's seven different ways. There's the edges, but also there's that circle. So controlling the three along the circle is also a three in a row. But unlike Chitaito, there's no ties, there's no winning strategy, so. Triangle or tic-tac-toe? <laughs> a little bit like that. Yeah. Now, had you used Cinder before? No, are, are you and, a, and this was Cinder. Are you a great games programmer by trade? <laughs> no, no. No? Okay. Well, I asked because uh, there's quite a few in the audience, so I'm assuming some are. No, but uh, I thought about wanting to make this before because you know, there's people out there who talk about, well, you can actually do this recursive. Like, you, you could get seven boards and play it out, so you actually have to control three of the boards and, and keep on going. So this would seem like it would be a good start to visualizing that. Oh, very nice. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. There were a lot. I think we have one more, if I remember right. Aaron McLaren. Oh, yes, Aaron was up here before, and I did not get any of his information, so he's the guy, poor guy who had a blank slide. Aaron, are you still here? I know you just had to leave like minutes ago for a plane flight, so we're right on the edge of whether, if you're here. I guess he had to catch his plane. I, I actually pasted from his email describing what this is. It's a st straightforward. <laughs> I, I break up when I, after that, that, after that, in a good way. This is, this is wonderful, Eric. Like, this guy's so smart. I feel really dumb, which is like most of the time, but I feel especially dumb. It's a straightforward stochastic L system with a single set of production rules to generate. I don't know what most of those words mean, but hitting the space bar resets the piece. I understand that. <laughs> That's where I, you get me back. And we have one more video from him, and that is here. And this shows you what you can do Let's do this. And I think I can just reach the play button. Yes. A very beautiful visualization using stochastic 
eclectic something or others that are just that are that are gorgeous to look at and and probably mean something very important in financial trading and high frequency. <laughs> And you can watch this video for four minutes because it continues to be online. And you can just search for Aaron's name and find this on YouTube. I think I, I was really not sure what would happen when I challenged you to try to do what I did because I wasn't even planning this until a few days ago because I happened to this graphics thing happened to come up. I had heard about Cinder. I started seeing it. I said, hey, look, here's this, this program. I wonder if it compiles. If it's a, I just wanted to see if it was a complete program. So I compiled it, and it ran, and I could mouse. I said, I wonder if it works with my pen. Sure enough, it did. And just seeing you could do that in 18 lines gave me the confidence to want to see what I could do in an afternoon. And that, in turn, got you guys to create everything from Missile Command and Pac-Man to stochastic some things, and all sorts of interesting games and visualizations, tank battles, pegboard games, just being able to draw grass on a field. This is well within the realm of C++ developers. You know, when you look at our industry, how many professional software developers are there? Anybody want to guess, by the way? And it really depends how you define this, right? Because this is so hard to define. But if you talk about professional software developers, the numbers have been pretty much the same for the last 10 years. Anyone guess? No, approximately? 100,000. 100,000. Three million. Three million, you're getting closer. About 10 million, 3 million of them are C++, actually about 9 million, and about 3 million of them are C++. And this depends on which study you look at and how you count, and that's not including people who do coding is not part of their day job. Many of the coolest things that are happening in our industry today are being done by people who are not even part of those 3 million. C++ developers who are, do it, C++ is part of their day job. They are artists, they are sculptures, they are financial analysts, they are history majors, they are creative coders, just like all of us would like to be. And if we can enable them, not only do we have to remember that our population is changing, it is, it, this is not just a language for people who are writing low-level server code that has no UI. This is a language that's very horizontal, and that there are more of them than us. But if we can enable them, just have th think how much they, we can enable us, the three million of us who are professional developers, to use this wonderful language that we have. It's a very exciting time to see this demographic shift in C++. And so we're glad to have been able to share experiences with so many different speakers. I want to thank them for coming from places like Facebook and Google, Adobe, so many places to tell us and share their experiences, some very low level, some very high level, some in very specific domains, because all of that is part of C++. Nobody knows what most C++ developers do, but that's a good thing. It means there's always something more to explore in this very horizontal language. So I want to thank, first of all, everybody, and this is, I think, a complete list of just the people who, in the last 24 hours, put together C++ code using a library they'd never seen before and gave an app and came here to share it with us. So we have about 11 people who have done that. So thank you to all of you. We really appreciate seeing what you did and sharing your ideas with us. And we want to thank the speakers, thank all of you for coming. You have come from 10 countries, 26 states. There are over 300 people who have been here in the room these last three days. And we have had thousands, and you can probably add another digit to that, of who have watched live online around the world. And of course, many more. Perhaps you're watching this on demand now, weeks or months or even a couple of years in our future. But this is still content that matters and that is going to affect the way that we continue to build software in the world. And I want to add a special thanks to people who don't often get thanked. This is, I think, important. The people who made this possible, made it possible for you to see things on the web. Charles, could you please stand up and we can give you a hand. Thank you very much for pulling this conference together.
If it were not for Charles in particular, going native last year and this year would not have happened. It was your idea. You brought it together. You were the, critical, you were the core, the critical mass that we could accrete around and say, yeah, yeah, that would be great. How can we help? So thank you very much for taking point in doing that. And to make it possible for everyone to see this around the world live and on demand, behind me, behind this wall, is this room full of equipment and, and people. Behind that wall, if you look, turn around and look behind you, and those of you in the control booth, can you wave so we can see you? You might be able to see through. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cynthia, who is the director of this event and, and is herding the cats and organizing everybody. And also, at the back of this room, you might have noticed people with monitors and, and glowing faces and a big camera, in addition to the robotic cameras down here. Thank you all very much for everything you've done to make this a quality production. So we hope to do this again. We're working actively on seeing what we can do for next year. And I, I am pretty excited about what I'm hearing because I think it will be even better. But I'm not going to spoil the surprise. We'll have more information for you in the coming months. In the meantime, we hope you enjoyed this conference. Thank you very much for coming from very far away for many of you. And I hope you have a safe travels home and enjoy what you've learned here and share it with all the people you know back at home. One last thing, Charles, you wanted to, to say something before we let everybody go? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who came. And as you had already said, just to call out a couple names of uh, particularly Larry and Golnus in the back. Larry and, and Golnus have been the ones for the people on the web that have been switching back and forth with code, crystal clear. So thank you guys and the Channel 9 team that's going to get these videos out in record time as they always do. So, of course, a huge thanks to all of you. You're the reason we do it. Great. Thank you all for coming. Safe travels and hope to see you next year.